Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. Uh, we're back in Foundry VTT, of course. It's where we seem to live these days. Um, we're going to look at an add-on today, uh, and we want to look at an add-on called Sequencer. Um, so this is going to help us create some effects and things like that because everything's good to go. We can we can absolutely run this and play this as we want. Uh, we've got D threads involved so that we can do our effects and things like that um, and apply them to characters from spells and things. But we can add some visuals on as well. So we're going to look at that. So I'm going to go to my manage modules. Now there's a couple of different things we need for this. One of the things we need is this advanced macros. We're going to want that on. We are also going to want sequencer itself. So sequencer is going to allow us with advanced macros to be able to do some coding bits. Don't panic. It's actually really quite straightforward. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it. Um, it's only relatively minor coding um, to apply animations to our tokens and things when we want to do stuff. What we need is some animations to work with. So the easiest way to do that is JB2A, Jules and Ben's Animated Assets. Um, this is free content, so we can do that. So we're adding on uh, JB2A, Sequencer, and also this advanced macro. So let's save that and uh, reload as it does automatically. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're using one of our new scenes here just to uh, give us a break from looking at uh, the ones we've been looking at for time and time again. Now you can see in the chat there it's uh, JB2A is up there and it's saying about there's a website, there's a Patreon and a Discord. We are using the free version. So there's a whole bunch of free assets that we can use without any problem. Um, but we could decide to take a Patreon membership and um, you know get access to lots of different ones. But let's start off with the basics, shall we? Uh, and I'd rather do these tutorials where you're not spending money beyond um, paying out for VTT as it is. So I've got here Haley and Nundro. So if you recall, Haley is a priest cleric um, and she has a number of things that she can do that produce spell effects um, that we might want to add animations to. So for example, turning undead is on there. We've got the light spell. We don't need to worry about that because we've got the torch add-on that does that for us. Casting Bless that we've done a bit of work with, uh, Guiding Bolt, um, Shield of Faith, and using our uh, D threads with our active effects here, we know that we can do that. So let's uh, select Haley. Um, oops, let me close convenient effects. If I'm selecting Haley with her targeted down here, we've still got our convenient effects to add Bless. And you can see that pops up in the chat, it tells us that it, we've added bless and we can toggle that off again but apart from that tiny little icon and that little word coming up there's no kind of visual so that's what we're going to look at and see what we can do today now you will notice in the top here we've got some extra icons appear we've got d threads we already know about um get rid of that we've also got our uh, token attacher that we looked at in a previous video but these two at the bottom here are new and these are the sequencer one so if i click this sequencer database it's going to there's a couple of ways you can do this you can look at them in this format but list views often easier there's a whole bunch of different free animations that we might want to apply so any of these we can press play and it's going to show us what that looks like so there we go we've got that free one there um, we've got this effect we've got this effect we got some floating rocks um, all sorts of different stuff lightning cloud of daggers melee club swing so we can even add on for melee and stuff if we want to so lots of animations but what we want to do is add those to our character so first of all i'm going to get rid of everything off of this bar here now I'm going to go to bar two and I'm going to make just the way I'm choosing to do it. Bar two is all going to be about Haley and her abilities. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the actors tab. I'm going to go to players. I'm going to find Haley and I'm going to drop drop Haley into that first box here. What that means is just clicking on that will open and close Haley's sheet. 
So it's a really good, for me as the DM, a really good quick reference. And of course, as a player character, they could also do that as a quick reference. They never have to go back to the Actors tab. Now, the unfortunate thing is it does bring in this um, this default um, book icon rather than our picture. But what we're dropping in here are only macros. So you can see what this macro does. Basically, hotbar, it toggles the document for the actor sheet. So don't worry about what that all means, but that's all it's doing. Okay, it's just opening and closing that. But we can change this icon here. Uh, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering where did we put, because I'm sure we did, <clears throat> excuse me, or if not, I will certainly upload them. Let's go to our, uh, let's go to our DM folder. I'm going to create a new folder for these actually in this one. And this directory name is going to be um, character port traits. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pop them in there because that's just easier. So I'm going to uh, choose file. There's my Haley picture. Open that, select file, and there we go. We've got my image there, so I can close that. The pause as it didn't. I did, I closed it. I didn't save it. What a muppet! Uh, remember. <laughs> Do as I say, not what I do. Sometimes I'm an idiot. Come on, let's try that once more. There we go. Oh, well, it's not in favorites. Uh, I don't want it in icons. User data, that's where I want to go. DM stuff, character portraits. There we go. We're going to select that one. Save the macro. Right, there we go. So bottom left here, it's a little bit small, um, uh, but you can see I've got my portrait of Haley, and if I hover over it, it's called that. Now I might edit that rather than saying display, I'm just gonna change it to her name. Good, right. Now I'm gonna open her character sheet and I'm going to have a look through her current abilities that I would like to add some kind of effect to. So under her features, do I want her turn undead to give a effect? Um, yeah, let's, let's slap that one down there. So before I do that, I'm gonna open dfreds so here on the left hand side and I want to find some of these things like class features that match with the ones I want to animate because remember dfreds will make the effect active and then we can put an animation to go with it so uh, I've got to turn undead here channel divinity I'm going to pop that down there in the macro okay what else do I want for Haley? I'm going to look under her spells I don't need light I do want to do bless so let's look under our spells drag bless we've played with that before she's definitely going to use that um, what other ones might she be using shield of faith she's definitely going to be using um, healing word uh, and cure wound so is there cure wounds in here there isn't so we'll ignore that one for the moment but you know we could make our own to do that um, in fact, we can still apply an animation for that if we want to, just because there isn't a effect on here. So, in fact, let's let's we're not going to do cure wounds, and we're not going to do it for a particular reason because that's slightly more advanced. We're going to do later. Uh, same with guiding bolt for the same reason. Okay, but I do want to have um, shield of faith is definitely something she will use on a regular basis. Now we have only got a certain amount of uh, space on these bars, uh, and I'm going to use them for macros for these individual characters. The problem with clerics, of course, is they can cast pretty much anything at any time from their lists. So it's really, really difficult to come up with a complete list of those. So at the moment, I just want to do the priority ones that she's going to use frequently and apply effects to those because this is purely visual. It's not affecting the actual uh, function of the game. So those are the three we're going to focus on. So I'm gonna close convenient effects, close Haley. Now if I have Haley selected and we just check this works, there goes Shield of Faith, puts our little icon in the top corner and we can click it to turn that off again. Same with Bless, take it off again. Same with Turn Undead, turn it off again. So we know that that bit works. We've looked at that before. What we want to do though, is we want to add some of those animations on there. So the first thing I want to do 
is find an animation that I'm happy with for each of these abilities. So I wonder if there is one here for Bless already. Oh, look, there's, there's four different ones. Um, so you notice these are pixel sizes rather than anything else, but we can just play those. It looks pretty good. Okay, so notice this is intro and loop. And then we've got intro and loop for the bigger one. So we can use a combination of those, but let's keep this simple. I'm going to use this one here. Okay, you can see it's got here the duration, 500 milliseconds, which equals five seconds. That's the one I'm going to use for when she casts Bless. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, when she casts Bless. So right click on Bless at the bottom left, and I'm gonna edit macro. Now, I don't want it to say toggle convenient effect, I just want it to say bless, so I'm gonna edit that. Now, as you can see, this type is set to script. We know that, that's come from dfreds. And in here, this command, this macro command, game, dfreds, effective in effect interface, toggle effect, bless. So all this macro does when we click the button is it toggles bless on and off. That's all it does. Okay, we're gonna add some lines to this, some scripting lines that will enable us to add our effect as well. Okay, so just compress space a couple of times. This is quite small. Tell you what I'm going to do because of this. I'm going to go to my settings. Uh, under the core, I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna find font size, and I'm gonna make that bigger for you. So hopefully that will make it a little easier for you to see. Nope, <sighs> me and mine not saving settings, eh? What a plank. Okay, so I'm gonna put that up to whatever that was, eight, I think, nine. Okay, uh, and it's gonna make it a bit bigger on the screen so you can see a little bit easier. Unfortunately, I haven't done an awful lot for the size of this text in here. So, We've got several different things we can do. We can do a temporary effect. What that means is it's gonna run an anima animation when we cast the spell and then it's gonna stop. We can do a persistent effect, which means it's gonna run an animation and keep that animation running until we tell it to stop. And the last one we can do is where we are uh, effectively like a beam attack so firing an arrow from one character to another or we're casting a spell like magic missile from one character to another what we want to do for this is we want to do a temporary effect so it shows it when we first do it so bear with me this is really easy once we get going so i've left a, a space just to clear this up what we want to do is we want to get a new sequence Okay, so we're going to start a new sequence and we've got that open and close brackets at the end. In coding, where we've got that brackets at the end, that is accepting what's called an argument, which means we can put stuff in there to say, we want you to do this using this information. So you'll find a lot of these command words like sequence will have those brackets on. And if we haven't got any arguments, um, to go in there they just end up as those open and then close brackets so just so you know that's what they for and we do need them so we're going to start a new sequence we want it to be an effect so that dot is just appending to the previous word sequence so it's a sequence and it's effect from the sequence menu so we don't need to type the sequence part first we're just doing the effect bit. So we just dot lets it know that it's part of the thing above and it's an effect. And again, at this point, we are not putting anything in those brackets. So no arguments in there because we're going to do those next. We are now going to do file. And here we are going to have arguments that are going to go in here. And that is the name of the file where the animation is kept that we want to display. So this is where we go to the very useful sequencer database. And what you'll notice next to this play button, there's also this um, looks like a can of a can of something, this cylindrical thing, which is a database option. If I click on that, 
it's going to save the file location name. I can come back to my macro and between those quotes, I can just do control V to paste that in. So you can now see it's saying for this effect, use file JB2A, bless the 400 pixel version, the intro and in color yellow. So basically this name here. So it knows where to look for that, brilliant. So we're gonna start a new sequence. It's an effect, we're gonna use that file. Now what we need to do is to tell it where to put that effect. So we're gonna put dot at location. Now bearing in mind it's all lowercase, location has a capital L because when we do that encoding, depending on the language, often when we've conjoined words together, we put that capital in to make that clear that that is a separate word. Uh, and again, we need our brackets, but here we do need to tell it what we want to do. So the location we want is on our token. Okay. We can also tell it what scale we want our animation to be. Okay. So. 0.5 so notice that's the argument we're telling it for the scale we also need to tell it how long we want this to play for so we're going to use duration and this is all in milliseconds okay so we're going to put in 5000 in there and the last thing we want to do here this space is unnecessary it just makes it a bit easier we want to tell it to actually play that okay so we want it to do a new sequence that is going to be an effect using that bless file on our token the size we want that effect to be and how long we want that effect to play and then play it so i'm going to click save macro okay so that's down here down here now okay and if i click it watch Haley. it adds bless and plays that animation and then it fades away okay so and we've left with if i stop targeting Haley, stop targeting Haley. thank you we're left with our icon in the top corner so dfreds is still doing its bit by actually applying bless and actually making the game mechanics apply bless but we've got that nice little animation that goes with it let's close that for the moment so once again if i click it again that is going to oops it's going to toggle off bless because remember that macro for dfreds said we toggle that status on off but it's going to play that animation again so we can put it on and we can take it off okay nice and easy so one other thing i want to do with this macro is i'm going to go to edit macro here is I'm not particularly happy with the size of that. So I'm gonna change this. What happens if I change it to a scale of one? Now I don't need to save the macro, I can execute it straight from here, which is much easier when we're, we're testing things. So I'm gonna play it from here. Yeah, are we happy with that? Try it at point 0.8, are we happy with that? okay so what we also need to be wary of that things like bless when we actually cast bless um, it can apply to multiple different characters so what we can do is actually go well I want to target you and I want to target you so we can target both of them okay now all you do to do oh, let me close the macro for a second I'm going to move these two apart a little bit I'm going to stop targeting them so it's Haley's go She's going to cast Bless. So I want to, uh, who are you gonna cast it on Haley? I'm gonna cast it on myself. So hovering over Haley, we're gonna press T to target. And I'm gonna cast it on Nundro. So holding down Shift, I can also hover over Nundro and press T. Now both of those are targeted. Down in my shortcut here for Haley, I'm gonna press her Bless button. It has now applied that to Haley with her animation, but it hasn't applied it to Nundro. Why did it not do that? Okay, so, because I wasn't expecting it to do that. We told it, 
here in our thing our location is at the t at the token so the token that was active at the time so Haley was the active token it didn't work on Nundro of course all I actually need to do is to go to Nundro and click it again so I can just hit the different you know the different tokens um, or I can select let's just check that that works actually because I didn't check that before let's turn that off of both of these okay so this is not about who's targeted it's who's selected but if Haley selected I hold down shift and select Nundro and now I do it it will do both at the same time okay so you need to oh it applied bless but it only played the animation on the first one we selected which was Haley. okay so just bear that in mind um, it's not who we've targeted it's who we the counters we have selected now D Freds has applied to everyone that was selected the animation was only on Haley. I don't have a problem with that she's the one casting it um, so for bless I, yeah I think that's perfectly acceptable let's turn both of those off again and we get that animation so when we toggle off on or off we're going to get the same animation uh, and that's it that's all that macro is to be able to do that um, and I'm quite happy with that we can change some things though so let's say instead for duration um, let's say we want it to last forever until we turn it off so instead of having a duration with a time I'm going to change that to the word persist so we want it not to end but to be persistent let's let's select Haley again execute that macro it's going to cast bless it's going to do that animation and it's just going to continue to loop that animation so remember the animation we chose was this intro one it wasn't loop let's try changing that intro to loop uh, I just need to bear with me one second just ignore that we'll come back to that in a second just turning that off manually for her now if I execute this this is the loop version of the same thing so that animation that's now on Haley is going to stay there because we've told it to be persistent so it's not going to go away on its own now we know that defreds with time times up means that in combat um, bless will eventually wear out and it will automatically deactivate it it will not deactivate this animation and this is something I haven't worked out yet and I know there are other modules that can help with this but I want to focus on sequencer at the moment um, so how do we then turn that off okay bless is going to time out automatically the animation won't so the other option that we've got that comes with sequencer we've got the database but under that we've got the sequencer manager so this is listing all of the active effects that are running at the moment so you can see the persistent effects and it includes this one so all I need to do is hit this cross here just to turn that one off so it's a manual process to switch it off because we've told it to be persistent or I can end all effects which will turn all of them off so it's up to you how you choose to use this now for me because I don't want that I know it's not much that extra bit of admin of going oh hang on a minute bless has worn off I now need to go turn the animation off I think I personally am perfectly happy with this duration and I'm going to stick with 5000 save that macro so it plays that animation lovely jubbly oh I've got it set to the loop one and then it stops okay so again I'm going to change that back I don't want that loop one I want that I think it was called intro wasn't it let me check it was called intro yes so I'm going to change that back to intro which has got that little okay save macro switch it off boof there's my nice effect now at the moment we're only adding this animation image we can add all sorts of other things like sounds um, so we can have um, noises that happen at the same time now I don't have some audio files for that at this point but I'm sure we'll do that later um, but that's that's it that's that's basically what we've got so I'm happy that bless is now ready to rock and roll 
I'm happy with that animation. D threads is working. Beautiful. So what about the next one then? I want to do the same for um, Shield of Faith. So again, just selecting Haley. Boom. There we go. Shield of Faith is applied. It's uh, now it's come off. So D threads is working beautifully. I'm going to change this because I don't need this toggle word. Everything's a bit squished up now because I made the font so big. So I can save that macro and that's now ready to go. So we're going to do a very similar thing here. I'm going to edit this macro. Uh, and again, it is just basically saying toggle field shield of faith on and off. So we need to add to this. We already know this. Remember, we're going to go new sequence, please. Uh, we also want to make sure we're talking about a new effect, please. Uh, and we need to select a file and we're going to put our file name in there. So this is for Shield of Faith. So we can open our database. Uh, and let's look at the Shield options that we potentially could use here. Uh, I'll make this window. Ugh, can't make the window a bit bigger. This is the problem with um, the game settings is, yeah, we can make all the writing bigger. <laughs> Um, for this uh, the font size, but actually it doesn't make the windows bigger to go with it Okay, so we'll have to go back down a little bit. All right, so shield. We've got all sorts of things here uh, Shield of faith That's what we're looking for purple cracked ones. No That one could work couldn't it? There's, a, there's quite a lot of shields uh, Yeah, we could use something like that that's actually a shield. Fire, we don't want to use it for that. Ice, we don't want to use it for this either. We want to use something that's going to be a bit more. Oh, that's very eldritchy. No, oh, it's called eldritch. <laughs> That'll be why. Uh, I see that looks more like wizard's actual shield spell or, or possibly mage armor. So I won't use that for this. Oh, very similar with that. Um, <clears throat> why don't we, let's go with this, we're going to go with this one. So remember if I click on the database thing, it's going to copy that field name back in here. I can just close that, must remember my closed speech marks and close those brackets. Okay, so we want now, tell it where to put it, at location, and that location we want is on the token. So basically on our selected token, we're casting it on and we want our scale. Uh, I'm going to put 0 uh, 0.8, see how that looks. We can always adjust it and duration. Now it would be nice and to be able to just say, hey, look, you know, um, just leave it permanently on until the time runs out. But we don't have that, that capability with what we've got at the moment so again hopefully we will be able to find a way to do that if you guys already know how to do that then that would be useful if you drop that in there okay so uh let's make sure we're looking over here so the, here we go we've got a Haley. when we execute our macro boom there's our shield of faith animation it doesn't last for too long disappears again but we've actually got our shield of faith now that's actually a bit larger than i wanted so i'm going to change this scale down Put that down perhaps to six and then have a look. Yep, that's a little bit closer. It's not interfering with anybody else there. Um, yeah, good. Gonna, I'm happy with that. So we're going to save that macro. Job done. So now for Haley, we have both the Shield of Faith and Bless done. Uh, and of course, we can do exactly the same thing for this. Uh, ooh, let's get rid of all of that turn undead so we're going to do the same for turn undead what i could have done if i was smart is edit this macro copy that stuff make sure i'm on a new line and paste it in there now obviously that's cop copied across the uh, the same animation um but we haven't changed the actual defrets thing so we've gained we've got that uh, that icon on there Okay, so if we open up Haley, just to just check under our effects. Yeah, so we've got our turn undead, 60 seconds, it's on there, which is fine. All right, so we need a different image for this. Um, 
wonder what we might find. Nothing think about undead. No. Something about holy. No. Was there another one kind of under bless that we could use? Well, that's bubbles. <laughs> I don't want bubbles. Okay, dokie. Let's uh, let's let's have a look what else we might be able to find under here. Uh, so just by changing this, we can see we've got anti-life shell, arcane hand, arrow, barrel, bats, bites, bolts, bonfire, braziers, breath weapons, bullets, burning hands. <laughs> There's loads of them on here. It's really really good. Cast a generic. Oh, that's interesting. Yep, so these effectively don't have any... That's an interesting one. These don't have a, a specific aim of, you know, effect that they're after. Uh, celestial bodies, what's... That literally is rocks. <laughs> we don't want that. Cast shapes, we can just do circles and things. Okay. Uh, cone of cold club cure wounds. So we might be using that, but not for now. What does that look like? Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Are there... Yeah, that's, that's the kind of thing that I might use for um, for Turn Undead, actually. But we'll save that for uh, for Cure Wounds. Detect Magic Disin Divine Smite. See, we could use that, couldn't we? Because it doesn't matter if we use other things. So for the caster, blue, yellow... Are we happy with that? And this is apparently it's reversed. I like that one. I'm going to use that blue yellow reversed one there. So all I'm doing is doing that copy again. I'm going to post it in here. That was boring, wasn't it? Just sitting there watching me think. <laughs> Brilliant entertainment value for you guys. All right. So uh, I haven't saved it yet, but we can test the macro anyway. I quite like that. Yep. Now, did you notice it kind of fired off twice, didn't it? Because the duration of this whole thing is 3,033 milliseconds. We've got it running for 5,000. So actually, if we change that to oh, and 33, if we change that to be exactly the same, it will play that whole animation spot on and stop. Okay. Good. So we've done Haley's three main things there, uh, which is really useful. Let's just let's turn her off again. Um, just adds a nice little sparkle, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not massive, um, but, but it's kind of just adds a nice little something. I'll see if I can find some sound files uh, at some point also to add to them. Just little zappy noises and stuff like that. Um, that's it. So I'm going to have a hotbar where I can easily access Haley's character sheet and her main things here, which is good. But what I want is for my character to also be able to access some of these things or when another character comes along that also can you do the same thing, such as bless, um, I want to make sure that these macros are saved somewhere. So the last thing I'm going to do for this video is go to our compendiums at the top right. Uh, I'm going to create a new compendium. And in this, I'm going to have macros. And I'm going to call this spell macros, for example. OK, um, <clears throat> so here it is. It's got nothing in it. But I should be able to drag my turn undead drag my bless and drag my shield of faith so those are in there now in that macro so what that does enable me to do is to share that um that mac sorry that compendium with any of the players that i want to i could potentially create a wizard's compendium I could create a cleric's compendium if I wanted to, to go to that far and then just share their specific compendiums and that would give them ability to apply their effects and stuff themselves if I wanted them to do that. 
Now, that for me, that would depend on my players. If they were a bit more experienced, I would be getting them to cast their spells and apply those effects correctly. For newer players, as the DM, I would keep that control myself because I want them focusing on the game, story, combat, rather than the mechanics and clicking buttons within here. But you'll get the balance for your own team, your own, uh, your own groups. That's what matters. All right, so uh, that's going to wrap up this video. Don't want it to get too long and carried away. So just to summarize what we've done here, we have installed the sequencer add-on along with the advanced macros to help make this work and the JB2A um, uh, pack of effects that we can use. And we've had a little look at some of those effects. We have combined into our macro the Dfred's effect application and the um, and the visual effects that go with that to create a single macro that we're then able to put into a compendium, keep them nice and safe. If I accidentally delete my bar down here and things like that, I can just pull them straight from the compendium. Okay, uh, and any of these I can open, uh, and there's the script all there. Now, of course, I can also lock the compendium. <laughs> so if I'm going to share it with players, I'm going to lock that compendium. Um, not because I expect them to be naughty and stuff, but you, you just never know. Somebody will make, an, make a, an error or something like that with it. So I'll leave that open for the moment. All right, so that's going to bring us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, again, leave a like, uh, leave any comments. Uh, if you've got slightly different ways of doing this or you've got ideas or you know some different of the macro stuff that we can use with these add-ons. So don't go charging off down different add-ons just yet. Um, but if there are add-ons that do go with this, let me know so we can look at those as an expansion. In the next video, we're going to look at Nundro and a couple of his abilities. Um, so he's got things like Eldritch Blast. So we want to be attacking other characters um, effectively with that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one.